Welcome everyone, it's Wednesday, I know, although I promised you to upload every Saturday, I was so busy working on new assets for my games and I also just finished with my exams, so yeah, here I am and let's pretend it's Saturday. As you have already seen from the title of the video, today we will go over some really cool mechanics of the classic Pokemon game series. Watch till the end and if you like this content, consider subscribing for more of it. Last time we left the game where we could collide with a ledge from both sides, so now it's time to give little Hercules the ability to jump over it from above. For those who don't know and haven't watched the previous episodes, this series is a tutorial from A to Z, from Alpha to Omega, from start to end, you get the point. We are going to create and publish a mobile game to the Play Store, with everything included. The game will be a custom Pokemon clone based on Greek mythology with the main protagonist being Hercules. Some of you mentioned a bug, and you were right, our character does not change his direction when clicking on the move button and an obstacle is in front of us. I fixed it by simply creating a new state in the animation tree that will work as the default state. In that state our character is always looking to the front. Now we only need him to turn whenever and wherever we click on the move button. The solution was to take the animation set float functions from inside the if statement and just put them outside. Fixed. In this game we don't use any colliders and detect every next tile in front of us in code. If it's an obstacle we can't move. But what obstacle is it? Is it a ledge? Is it a horde of Psyduck or a sleeping Snorlax that only listens to a flout and radio music to wake up? So annoying. We detect the obstacle first by printing its name on the console. Every time we collide with a ledge it has the name of the tileset and that's nothing we can actually work with. But we can change the name of all tiles to include the word ledge in them and also make our code smarter to search for exactly that word by using name.contains. My life was way harder before I knew this little trick. So now in case we collide with whatever part of the ledge we are detecting it and are a step closer to achieve the results we want. Next we want to also make sure that we hit the ledge from above only and that's done by checking if we click the down arrow. In other words, if movement.y equals to minus 1. If all these requirements are met then we can move again by using our move coroutine. Let's see this in action. Nice! We can't climb up but jumping down is now possible. By the way jumping, let's recreate this beautiful jump animation from Pokemon Emerald. Should be easy right? Wrong, I tested so many different ways to do this over endless hours but I'm confident enough now to show you the final attempt. Whenever I want to create an animation for a character I first create another empty game object that works as a parent. I make sure that the position is the same and that the child object has all position values set to zero. After setting this up we are ready for the animation. The animation will be created for the parent object as it can handle all of its child, just like in real life. It's nothing too fancy, just a movement in the y axis to give the illusion of a small hop or jump. Locate your animation and turn off the loop time. Also pro tip, in the settings enable the debug view and then check legacy. In case you have never seen this and are just wondering what big brain stuff I just did, let me explain. Legacy is an animation type that can be used outside of an animator by assigning it to an animation component. This is all you need to know, let's move on. Since we don't want to use an animator, delete it and replace it with an animation where you assign the jump we created. So far so good. Back in our code we now need to have access to the animation and play it at the right time. We already see when we can move through a ledge, so all we need to do is to write another line of code inside of the if statement. Get component and parent, animation, play. See how sexy our jump is? Yes, but you can also see a little problem. We land exactly on the ledge. That must hurt for sure, even for a Greek demigod like Hercules. Back to the script, when we pass the new position to our coroutine, this time we need to increase the distance by adding a new vector 3 where the y value is minus 1. That way we land on the second tile in front of us. I can do this all day if you let me. Some adjustments to the jump animation and it's perfect. Nintendo, Game Freak, 
Be prepared for the next big franchise. Your time has ended. Just kidding, please hire me. The next cool thing I did was to recreate the iconic Pokemon Center that resurrects, I mean, heals your fainted Pokemon for free since the first generation. It's a cool place, don't get me wrong. You can run in with a PG that just got hyper beamed by Gyarados and... It's all healed up and ready for revenge. Or not. The basic art style and design of the building is almost the same, but I wanted to make it unique to our game, so I changed the color palette to green, and its main symbol is the staff of Aesculapius, a snake around the staff of the god of healing. It represents the healing process. The skin shedding of the snake represents immortal life, and its sudden change in activity emphasizes transit from sickness to cure. So this symbol is used worldwide for medicine purposes, and I guess you've already seen it at least once. Therefore, it will be the perfect logo for our new medical center. Not Poker Center, Medical Center. I hope you like it and the story behind it, since our game is based on Greek mythology. Now with a sprite ready, I imported it into Unity and set the sprite mode to multiple. In the sprite editor, we can now slice it into sprites that are 16 by 16 pixels perfect for our tile map. Drag it into the tile palette window and you should have all tiles ready to use. I really like how it works and I'm the newest, biggest fan of tile maps. Ok for the buildings we will need a new separate tile map that also needs to be on the character sorting layer. It fits the game really well, what do you think? And to make it visually better, I just move the whole tile map a bit in the Y axis, just a little bit. Very nice. Now we only need to detect it with our amazing gizmo detection system, in order to prevent the movement on it, but only allow the entry through the door. Back in our script, let's assign a new public tile map variable for the buildings. Next, in the if statement, where we check if any obstacle is on the next tile, we also need to make the same check with the new tile map. Just copy paste and replace the tile map variable. That way, we can't move if any obstacle or building is in front of us. Great. We then need to find with what exactly we are colliding. That's why the else statement is now an else if statement. One for the obstacles and one for the buildings. In the future, we may need to add more here. Let's jump back in Unity, assign the tile map to our character script and hit play. Ok, we collide with the medical center from every side, but we also collide with the door. Easy fix, let's ask ourselves, when do we want to walk into a door? The answer is when the specific tile map contains the word door in its name, and we also click the up move button. What I just said in words can be described with this line of code here, almost like before with the ledge detection. If all these criteria are met, we just call the move coroutine and we are done. All we need to do is to find the tile with the door in it and add the door in its name. As you can see, just like magic, well, no magic but pure awesomeness and infinite coding skill, we are now able to walk inside the door. The same process will be repeated for every other building in the game, so I won't cover it in the future again, in order to talk more about new stuff that we need to implement. For the next time, I will try to create the building from inside and code enter mechanics. That will be interesting. The last little but very important thing for this episode is the camera move script. Just like in every older Pokemon game, the character stays in the middle of the screen, while the camera follows him around through the whole adventure. Oh, and before I forget, you can have the whole Unity project with the custom assets and scripts on itch.io for a very low price, or you can be one of the channel's patrons. By doing so, you not only support me more than you can imagine, but you also get many benefits for yourself, one of which being this project. Every time a new episode is released on the channel, I also upload the latest version of the Unity project on itch.io, so you will always find the latest bundle with all new assets added. If this is nothing for you, but you desperately want to show your support and gratitude, I just say this. I love coffee, I mean, I drink like 3 to 4 cups a day, not only because they boost my productivity, but because I simply love to drink coffee. Every kind of coffee. I'm even drinking one right now as I'm recording. 
and now you can buy me one at buymeacoffee.com with the link in the description. Check it out, it's a really fun way to show me that you like the content and want to see more of it. I would appreciate it very very much. And with that said, I will close this episode with a huge thank you to every single one of you that helped me in reaching 2000 subscribers. We did it, we did it together and I promise to improve my game dev and YouTube skills every single day. To continue the talk, join our Discord Imp Unity and before leaving, make sure to like the video if you like it and subscribe if you just can't get enough of me. Thanks for watching, keep developing and I will see you very soon. Ciao!